I'm amazed by how people in America became more concerned or, in some cases, obsessed with how billionaires can travel to the edge of space than being concerned about the things in their own lives that directly affect them and their families. Welcome to Four Seas One Family. Welcome to Four Seas One Family, where we share thoughts and opinions concerning life in Taiwan, the region, and the world. I'm your host, James Thomas, coming to you from Taipei, Taiwan, and I'm so glad to have you traveling along with me on this journey, and welcome to the show. It is inconceivable to see how people who live and function in the upper stratosphere of financial, political, entertainment, and other privileged social circles become the goalposts and symbols of well-being and achievements. In some cases, the overzealous behaviors of some of these billionaires have turned into a personality cult that encourages people to express unadulterated admiration for them simply because they can do whatever they want, anytime they want. Let's face it, they have access to unlimited talent and resources that permit them to do what they want to do anytime they want to. However, in some cases, this can become extremely dangerous for society as a whole. Now, history has shown that when people are under social, political, or financial stress, whether or not if it's of their own doing, they often look for reasons that they feel explain their unfortunate predicaments. There are many examples of how a nation put blind faith in the abilities of a powerful and charismatic individual that later turned out to be catastrophic for their country. Now, it is no secret that many charismatic leaders in the past only became leaders because their advisors were looking for ways to elevate their own personal financial and political position. Several charismatic leaders obviously didn't clearly understand how to handle or implement beneficial and objective policies for their nation and its citizens. They were just figureheads that helped spearhead the financial and political endeavors of their well-connected supporters who had their own motives and objectives which made these leaders tools or puppets. However, on the other hand, influential, charismatic individuals use or have used their powerful positions to formulate and enforce financial, political, and social reforms and policies that they feel or have felt will permanently cement them, their family, associates, and cronies in their powerful positions. Honestly, many of these individuals truly believe or at least one time thought that their actions were not only made for the well-being of themselves and their countrymen, but also, in some cases, for the world as well. Now, I'm not here to debate whose financial, political, or social reforms were more advantageous or destructive for a particular person or nation. I'm here today to express why people in democratic nations must stay vigilant that there are people, groups, and organizations from nefarious foreign governments working to formulate ways to destroy the freedoms and rights people have in their nations. One reason may be because certain foreign governments believe that the rights given to people and nations that stress transparent governing as possible threats to their control in their own nation and existence. Now, we have seen certain thinking like this become the primary reason why certain politicians and world leaders put specific social and political policies into action within their own nation. Some of these national leaders have even used their powerful positions to implement laws and insert amendments to their federal constitutions that either guaranteed their powerful privileges for an extreme long time or, in some cases, for life. Now, do we have to be reminded of how blind cultish beliefs and behaviors have caused people to engage in destructive actions that only added to confusion and later to their demise? Are people from nations that are allowed to say, do, and fail without harming themselves and others too concerned in getting all they can for themselves, while in contrast others are left fighting for scraps? Do people who have personal freedoms today need to be reminded or are they willing to confine themselves in their selfish beliefs and develop selective amnesia? You know, 
Mental quarantines are a lot worse and have more prolonged effects than physical quarantines. So don't quarantine your mind. Today, there are people searching for social, political, and spiritual gurus and networks to help them or encourage them to choose their direction in life. And I may even be guilty of this myself. However, I am aware that this can lead to destructive behavior on a personal, social, and even on a spiritual level, if not controlled. There are tools, platforms, applications, and organizations, nefarious forces used to inject their subversive soft power measures to guide and mold the way people think in democratic nations they see as threats to their control and existence in their own nation. Foreign as well as domestic nefarious forces can use their access to social and political platforms in democratic nations to change democratic ideologies gradually and indirectly, which in the end causes people, especially in the minds of the young generation, to question the core beliefs that held their democratic nation together, which could hinder other positive reforms in their nation. This has recently been discussed as a topic in an interview with Ashton Kushner concerning his views of how the social media app TikTok from a Chinese company called ByteDance has become a threat to social stability in America. He pointed out how this app influences Americans and is being used to acquire personal data that can be sold and marketed to governments and industries trying to influence perceptions and the decisions people make in America. He basically pointed out that this social media app is very much like a ticking time bomb that can be used to weaken the unity and derail social and political progress in America. With all this in mind, the majority of democratic societies all over the world over the years were able to face the social and political differences that threatened their existence relatively transparently and incrementally. Although by, by no means perfect, most democratic nations over time were able to create and initiate policies and laws that protected the rights of individuals who were citizens, regardless of their skin color, religious beliefs, ideology, and in some cases, sexual orientation. At one time, people who came from nations that didn't regard equal rights of value looked up to countries that allowed these protected rights. However, today, the way some democratic nations are viewed has changed. Today, some democratic nations are viewed as satellites of mass confusion and selfish inequalities that are led by people who themselves have hidden motives that could easily lead to the destruction or the implosion of the principles initially held and formulated in freedom-loving societies. People who are lucky enough to live in democratic nations must be aware that the personal freedoms they have in their nation are seen as threats to governments and individuals who are seeking to maintain their autocratic control in their own nation. People from democratic nations must be willing to aggressively protect the rights and freedoms they have because if they don't, they will surely be taken away. And regardless of the accomplishments made, there is still a long way to go to create an atmosphere where people can feel that they are treated equally. Or maybe we should be asking ourselves if equality is a possibility in nature. If you have found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, Please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. For Forest News Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay strong, safe, and